And welcome back to a crossover edition of Locked On Rams and Locked On Raiders. Here in our third segment, some more keys to the game. Q, what is your biggest key for the Raiders winning on Sunday? Well, look, I, I look at it like this. I got three big things that I think that the Raiders have to do. The, I like to call these things non-negotiables that they have to do to have an opportunity to win this game on Sunday. And it, it's funny, you know, usually I can really, you know, get deep into the weeds and into the woods when it comes to all these different things. But the Raiders haven't been doing the basics very good, right? Right now they lead the league in missed tackles. So the number one thing they have to do is they have to limit their missed tackles. They, they really do. They have to be sure tacklers. They did a really good job in the first half against Pittsburgh last week and not so much in the second half. They struggled in the second half. And, you know, so that just kind of opened up the floodgates. And again, it was a 12 to seven score uh, at halftime and it ends up being 32 13 when it's all said and done. So you can see that the wheels fell off uh, coming up in the second half. So tackling is a must. They also must create a couple turnovers. Their offense is just not good enough. I would be lying to you if I said it was, and I'm not going to do that to you, right? The offense is not good enough to sustain drives up and down the field. I had it written down somewhere. Matter of fact, I think I have it over here somewhere. Where is it? Check this out real quick. First drive of the, of the game against Pittsburgh, 10 plays, 70 yards, took a five minutes off the clock touchdown. Rest of the first half, three plays, six yards punt, three plays, nine yards punt, four plays, 14 yards fumble, five plays, 18 yards halftime. They're, they're not good enough to sustain drives consistently, right? They had two 10-play 10, 10 drives the whole game last week against Pittsburgh. So they've got to have a couple short fields so they can go five or six plays but get into the end zone. So it's going to be up to the defense to create a couple turnovers, get the ball to them uh, in a favorable position, maybe even in plus territory, and be able to go and uh, and, and score like that and, and, and just take advantage of, like I said, a short field. So you got to tackle. you got to have the short tackling. You've got to create a couple turnovers. And offensively, you've got to get the ball to the playmaker's hands, but you've got to have, you know, some consistency when it comes to, you know, Brock Bowers. And, and really, I guess I should take it back to you got to establish some kind of run game. Like you mentioned, the Rams aren't good at stopping the run. The Raiders have only gone over 100 yards, what, one time this season? That was against, uh, who was that against? That was, oh, against Cleveland. They went for 152 yards against Cleveland. That's the only game. So they've got to get some kind of run game going. So tackle, create a couple turnovers, establish the run game, and uh, and, and, and see where they can go from there. But uh, the offense has been on the struggle bus all season long. I'd like to see them get off that bus and show some kind of you know some kind of life and some consistency throughout the course of the game. Yeah, I think on the ter- on the takeover topic, the Rams bottom third in the league when it comes to takeaways. And this is a Raiders team. They have the most takeaways in the fewest takeaways. I mean, the fewest, they have the most giveaways and the fewest takeaways right. in that the part. NFL. They've <laughs> taken the ball away just twice all season. That's the fewest in the league. Is also given away 12 times. That's more than yeah. every team in the National Football League. They have a minus 10 turnover differential. And that's three worse than any team in the NFL. So it's another yep. thing, just like we're talking about the rushing topic. If you're not going to take away against the Ram, against the Raiders, who are you going to do it against? If you're not going to stop the run, the right. rush against the Raiders, who are you going to do it against? I mean, this really should be the ultimate, okay, let's go in there at home at SoFi Stadium and win this game and try to make something of this season, take it game by game and view this as, okay, win today, get healthy, yep. just like that, try to get to 500 and make something of this season. Another thing we want to see is, look, Matthew Stafford, three touchdowns, three interceptions. Yes, he can still make all the throws. You see the arm talent, the big time throws. You see the arm angles doing what they do with Stafford. He can still make all the throws, but one, he's kind of going toward butter knives a little bit when it comes to the receiving core, the tight end that really hasn't played up to expectations. I think you need to see a signature Matthew Stafford performance like we saw last year after the bye week where he really got things going. Him and Kyron Williams really led this team to the postseason, as well as a defense that stepped their way up. Man, I wish Aaron Donald would come back. Miss that guy so much. I mean, if you're watching this, AD, it's not too late, man. We need you back. But throughout his career, Matthew right. Stafford, he's balled out against the Raiders. I mean, throughout his career, I mean, small sample size, but still 2-1 and one against the Raiders throughout his career. I mean, he had two games with 390-plus passing yards, and the one game he lost, he had a 406-yard game with three touchdowns in 2019. So they need Matthew Stafford to come up big, make all the throws, limit the turnovers. I mean, against the Packers, you saw some pretty ugly interceptions by his standard. You saw a bad turnover by Kyron Williams as well. And then this is a team that is built to run the football. You bring in a, a, a Jonah Jackson who... You still haven't gotten the production from him. He's been injured with a shoulder injury, but you still have Kevin Dotson. You have a Bo Limmer 
who is a young rookie at center. I mean, you just have to find a way to run the football against this Raiders team, and hopefully you find some way to salvage your season. I don't know if you throw out predictions on the crossover episode. I mean, you no. can't wait for that, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, no, no predictions. predictions. I'm not going to throw out a prediction on you. I have no idea. idea what to expect. I would be lying to you if I told you what I have to expect. And it's funny, I've been doing this for a long time. I feel like I have a really good idea of, of who this Raiders team is each and every year. This year, I'm so – the last handful of games, I really haven't had any idea what to expect, game in and game out, which I, I hate that that's the case, but they have not established who their identity is, who they are as a team. So I really don't know, like, what they do really well as of yet. So it's like I can't say, well, I know that they're going to run the rock really well or they're going to pass the ball really well. Brock Bowers is going to go off. Like, I just don't know what to expect game in and game out. I hate that that's the case, but that's the case. Yeah, no, that's the case for – uh, this side too. I mean, we kind of go into every week feeling somewhat optimistic, but I think that another thing you want to look at is can this Rams defense finish? I mean, this team struggled right. to finish in the red zone, finish halves. I mean, everything you can look at, it's about finishing. And one thing you want to see on Sunday is you want to get home. The Rams are fifth in the national football league in pressure rate, but they also have the fifth fewest sacks in the NFL. So you can apply that pressure. They're proving to do that with Jared verse and braided fist. They're, the top two rookies when it comes to generating pressure, but you got to get home and get some sacks. And hopefully we see that on Sunday as well. So, yeah, I mean, look, this is a game where when the Raiders come to Los Angeles, let's be honest, it means something. It's special yeah, because sure. this town has a lot of Raiders fans, lots of Rams fans as well. The fan base is continuing to grow. But I mean, when the Cowboys, the 49ers or any of these teams come to town, it's the Raiders that have the deepest roots in this town. So, it definitely means something. And, you know, I am reminded of the great uh, Baker Mayfield moment. He hops off the plane and just beats the Raiders, right, yes, in that down I season. Remember. <laughs> I mean, of course. I mean, so I hopefully the, um, I'm hoping that beating the Raiders this year won't be one of the only Rams highlights for the 2024 season. Hopefully there's much more than that. But to sit here and say, oh, I'm fully confident the Rams are going to steamroll this right. Raiders team and get back on track, I'd be lying to you, right? So. I am expecting this team with Sean McVay after a bye week to come out swinging and executing well. I think if Cooper Cup does play, it will definitely bring a nice charge to this offense. And these rookies are only getting better. I do like the Rams to win this one. That's how I feel right now. I'm throwing out, I'll throw out the score prediction on Friday's show. But I got the Rams winning this one. But hey, to say I feel good about that, I'd be lying. Yeah, I hear you. Believe me, I hear you. It's it's a it's a tough call, man. I mean, neither one of these teams are stellar. They're not just lighting it up right now. So far in the season, they both need a win. So, uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just hoping that the Raiders go out there and put their best effort on the field. And if they do that and they play a pretty clean game, I feel confident that they can go and win a game. But like I said, with the, when I went back to the keys to what I had, th those are the non negotiables that they have to have. If they do that, they give themselves a chance, and that's not guaranteeing a dub. But if they do the non-negotiables. At least I'll put them in a better position. For sure. Real quick, I mean, I can't let you out of here without getting your take on Tom Brady, mm. getting that ownership stake. I mean, how do you feel yeah. good about that? I mean, do you want to see him starting on Sunday? I mean, just how do you feel about, about Brady uh, joining that, uh, the Raiders Nation like that? Yeah, it's interesting. It really is because he's a minority owner, and it's very rare that minority owners are celebrated like the Raiders are celebrating him, right? I mean, I was at the facility on Wednesday, and he arrived there on Wednesday, and, I mean, the whole building had, uh, you know, everyone came out of their offices, and they all greeted him right there in the lobby, and he's on the microphone talking to everybody, and there's reports that he's going to have more than just a minority stake in, in the team as far as he's going to have some kind of – uh, decision-making power, which is interesting because he's a minority owner. So I don't know what his role is going to be defined. I'm waiting to hear from somebody official that has the power to say what he's going to do or what he can't do. I also want to see how it works with his Fox broadcasting duties because there's so many rules that he can't really do that broadcasting yeah. job the way that he should. And we're in the business. We know how much it takes as far as research and sitting down with coaches and players and going to the facility and observing practices. And if he can't do that, can he really do his job to the level of an A-list guy, which he's on the A-team for Fox? So there's a lot that goes into that. I'm still kind of in the wait and see. Uh, I don't think it can hurt the organization that he's you know, a minority owner. I just don't know how much it's going to help the organization move forward. So I'm kind of in a wait and see mode when it comes to Tom Brady as part owner of the Silver and Black. Yeah, it's like something where you see it and you're kind of excited about it. I mean, it's just kind of cool just in general. But then you read about he's not permitted to attend in-person or online broadcast production meetings. He might have access to team facilities, players or coaches. He can't publicly criticize officials. 
So it's going to be interesting to see how this affects his broadcasting duties, which he's still getting used to. I mean, guys like Collinsworth and all the broadcasters, you know, they go to practice and they're yeah. talking to people. So it's really interesting to see that. But, hey, look, man, you finally got a winning quarterback with the Raiders right now in Tom Brady. You got to feel hey. good about that. So got to <laughs> But this is what is my take on that? Hey, the tuck rule still pisses me off. OK, and yeah, yeah, I would have to get him to say something about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, apparently he has. Someone said yeah. that he's uh, I think Mark Davis said that he admitted that it was a fumble. But I mean, that's great. That's great now. And, and look, to, to be fair to him, it wasn't his fault. The officials called it bad. Oh, I mean, yeah. it was no, terrible, for sure. it's terrible just, call by the officials. But just of all teams, you know. that's the team that he ends up on. I mean, that really sparked the run. But still, we all yep. know the truth about that.